Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another data precision digital multimeter model 1450. So I think this means it is a four and a half a digit a meter. And if you look really careful, you can see that will be some Beckman displays, some neon high voltage seven segments. And that is exactly why I went for this one. I think it was a flea market or an auction, or something like that. It should be from about 1978. And back in 1978, it was about $500. For this unit so it's of course not their their top of the line super duper expensive version but still a little bit more than average uh, hobby budget i found one on ebay for 70 dollars it's a quite beat up a rusty dirty one but at least they show that it powers up um <laughs> i don't even know if this one powers up or not but after a little bit of cleaning, I yeah, it looks like I need to clean it up a little bit more. But I don't know if this one powers up or anything at all. It looks like I got the handle missing here. And on the back, we see the calibration procedure for the different DC, AC. It's quite a lot for AC. So we got tons of trimmers for that and the cool thing is all this is available on the back all you have to do is pull here and there you have it access to calibration isn't that cute and uh, I think this uh, fuse here is for the test current and this one is of course for the mains power supply I don't know if this one is adjusted for the correct mains voltage, but I should assume so. There isn't any stickers or anything. So as usual, I really recommend we open and have a deep check before we power this up. The bottom of the unit reveal, look at that. Somebody did a little bit of service and forgot to cut all the pins of that I see after soldering. That looks sloppy jobby. <laughs> I think this is the mains mains fuse and then there's a wire like this one going straight through that area to a point down there instead of soldering it to that point. What is the point with that? And what is this? Some rubber thingy pulley pulley, see? <laughs> For this plug-in module here, using some, I mean, that is probably the weirdest. <laughs> what have you? Oh yeah, about this missing IC. Look at that. It's probably some pull-up resistors or something like that, or some configuration or setup, something. It's definitely, it was never used for something, so that is not super important. But this uh, Mostek main chip, that was replaced. See, a little bit nasty solder job there. And uh, we got a little bit of writing. On the circuit board here it says D64-1007 revision A. Okay. And uh, what else did I see that was a little bit funny? Oh yeah, that one. Let's look a little bit again on this glass thingy thingy. What is that IC doing? So you got some half transparent areas. Oh man, that is some fan. I'll try and take a little bit more close up. So look at that. This is definitely 
voltage divider resistor. The video camera refuses to let me super zoom, but I'll put in a few stills in super zoomed here so you can see this fantastic glass resistor component here. I am a little bit impressed. Maybe I can find a type number or something. I was able to find a full schematic, full manual and everything about this unit. So I'll just show you a real short the schematic. And um, let's try and zoom in on the A1 part, that sexy glass input resistor. And uh, yes, this is of course all the different voltage ranges. And all that is of course carefully trimmed to the last uh, pico micro super accurate thing. So uh, I got really high expectations for this uh, unit. The module in the middle of the unit is a switch mode power supply. So that is a little bit fascinating to, uh, to find that in such a unit like this, because why? I mean, there isn't any reason for this. And also this missing A7 part that I was a little bit worried about. This is just a um, pull down resistor for the digital signals from that um, high voltage seven segment driver. So let's try the first power up. I will leave this in off and then I will turn on mains and it is using 0.4 watts. Um, I don't know exactly why it would do that. Let's try and... That is... Oh, here you go. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> that, that was scary. Is it? Is it always doing that? Let, let's try and do that again. That, that was not what I expected. So, um, okay, here we go again. Oi. That's better. That is a uh, weird kind of power on. Especially it's not the same in second try. So, okay, I'm in 100 volt DC. And here is 10 volts. And that is fantastic. Um, as far as I understand, this unit is a 19,999 count plus minus. So it's almost 20,000 counts, right? So if I go to 10 volt, in this range, I should be able to put in 19. So let's try and see if that is the case. Wow, I really like, love the fonts, by the way. So that is 19, and let's go for the 19.9, and some more nines, and... Uh, oi, why are you complaining about that already? Here you go. Oh. I am a few millivolts from overloading it, but so... That is definitely right, and it should be, this unit should auto zero and all sorts of sexy things when it comes to its AD converter. So what I should be able to do now is I should be able to reverse it. And then it should go exactly the same in negative. Let's see if that is the case. So if that is 995. What was it? Huh? <laughs> I think that is close enough, but it should. But anyway, so that is how it is. All the ranges working. Okay, so the, the last is. This is one kilo, this is 10 mega ohm. I'm a little bit worried. 
how is this possible? 10, 10 kilovolt full range? Yeah, <laughs> that cannot be it. It should only be about, let's look at the specifications. I found the specifications also in the manual. So um, how many volts can this handle? Yeah. So that was right, the maximum allowed DC voltage input is 1000 volts. And uh, of course, uh, you can use the 10 kilo range here, but that is just to get a higher loading resistance. It's not going to give you the capability or allowing you to input more than 1000 volts. So of course, if you want to read out uh, 1000 volts, but with highest possible accuracy, you need to use the one kilo uh, position I am in here. But in this position, obviously, you're loading the input more. Um, also, let's try the DC current. It should be able to do one amp, 1000 milliamp. So that will give me 1000 milliamps like that. And then in this position, it's removing one of the digits. So why is it doing that? Because they don't want me to have higher resolution. That is so funny, isn't it? So let's try and give it just a little bit of uh, milliamps. Here is 100 milliamps. And uh, of course, if I want another digit, I need to do like that. So that is really funny. You are losing resolution in uh, amp mode instead of volt mode, right? I mean, that is, um, hmm, I didn't expect that. It's I'm not complaining or anything, but it's just a little bit funny, isn't it? So this is in milliamp mode, and then you go, well, what happened here? Well, well, so let's try one amp. So this is milliamp mode. This, this is, this is weird. What, what, what is happening with my, this is this, you're not supposed to use this, right? Because this digit here is not giving you any idea of you know what the heck i have 996 milliamps okay why why would you do why why are you doing this to me <laughs> that is just uh, not good enough okay we can try the smaller ranges so that will be 10 milliamp and i can of course give it only one or something like that Ooh, it's a little bit. Maybe it's my generator, by the way. I could fix oh, that. That was, of course, my generator. I mean, this is always a thing. Is a when there's a readout problem when you're what you're poking around with here. I mean, you always need to double verify what it is you're doing <laughs> when you're trying to create a one milliamp uh, source. I mean, you need to double check what you have to, what you have done is absolutely right. And look, here it is, one milliamp, and it is of course accurate. So I'm super happy about that. I think I will end this video right here and say thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Oops. Oops, I <laughs> did it survive that. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye.